So on to the last part, the very last part. We're going to work some details in here. And it's time to get some cut lines, uh, break out body panels, etc. So first I'm going to start by just sketching on the where I think the cut line should be for the, the glass that is. And I'm not actually sure. We're, we're deviating quite a lot from the original sketch because, as I said earlier, the um, I wasn't really, I really didn't capture the section of this sketch, but you know, it was inspiration. So I'm trying to get this line that I'm sketching on to look fairly okay in both views. And it's gonna take a few, I think, iterations to get it nearing uh, something that's usable. So I'm just throwing on all the lines so I can see the relationships. And, uh, looking at them from all views. By the way, I'm, I'm using this standard brush and it's put on RGB and taken off of uh, Z add so that it only applies poly paint instead of uh, pushing and pulling the polys. Now what I'm doing is showing on a mask, delineating the, the, uh, the glass from the body. And from here, I'll just make a poly group of that by pressing control W. But first, let me get it all the way on. Make a poly, well, having seen it in this view, I, there's some corrections that I need to make and I think I need to make this line straighter. Look at it in top view, see how it looks still. There's some funnies here. Maybe I'll square that up a little bit. The front end that is. And this is a good start. So I need to make crease the polygroup edges. If you look really close, you can see there's those dotted lines around the uh, edge of the polygroup groups. And now I can use the crease bevel to to put an additional poly loop where that crease was. This is really cool because now I can use that to create a real cut line with some depth and thickness. So I've creased that and I've used a smooth crease brush, making sure that it's smooth. And then now the slide brush to slide it and slide it to take out all the little funnies that might still exist. In this view, you can see it and uh, So now, but when you do that, actually the, the surface is, has distorted somewhat. It's not exactly the same surface I started off with because when you use a smooth crease brush or any smooth brush, it actually depresses the surface. And so what I need to do is take that and project it back down to a copy, an original copy. So now you don't see any depressions from the smoothing that, that went on. So even with those poly loops there, those poly groups there, you don't really see where I've depressed it or smoothed it. So that's cool. Now I can take the uh, Z modeler brush and set it on poly group all, and I can use that to inset that. And now you can clearly see there is a cut line. What I've done here was just to put some subdivisions in there, which cause that those edges around that cut line to show a little radius. So now they're not as stark as they were. So now when I've separated those or hid the other, I can now use the grow to, to bring that edge right back into the body, as you can see there. And once I've done that, I can create it as one whole group. The same for the uh, bottom portion and I can bring back some of that poly loop that was created with the cut line and then make that all into one group. So not only is there a cut line, there's some thickness to the sheet metal as it folds over into that flange, which is really kind of cool. The rest of it, I'm just going to group that all with the wheel, uh, 
the wheel wells and the lower part of the body, the undercarriage, and I'm gonna make that all one color, black. So I'm making that all into one poly group. So when I take it inside of ZBrush or take it inside of Keyshot, I can easily designate a color for that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for these little details here, using the mask to define it. Take the mask, take the lines off, the poly paint off so I can see it very clearly and then clean it up a little bit more. Now make that into a poly group, put an edge or a crease around that too. The same for the front. Following the glass a bit. Correcting it in all views. Making that into a poly group, creasing both of those. Always save. And then now, with that crease on there, I can go to the bevel two and, and you can see there's a bevel. There's a small poly group that's wrapping around, which is going to be again, the cut line for this particular part, those particular parts. The rest of it so i'm using the smooth crease brush again and smoothing all of those poly groups and that goes a long way but then obviously i'll have to use the uh, slide to 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 um, actually get some of the detail in there and get it to work just right again the slide the uh smooth crease too the only reason why it's smoothing is because it's got the crease on there, which is kind of cool. Again, there's some distortion with the body. I'll suck it back down to the pattern, the duplicate of the body before I put any of these poly groups on it. And uh, now I'm ensured that the the body has no distortion. As you can see, you can, can't really tell there's a cut line there. So now I can take the Z modeler. Oh, there's a crash. Luckily, Luckily, it did a quick save, so I can get that back. All the poly groups are different colors, but it's the same thing. So now I can take the Z modeler. By the way, if it doesn't go in, if it doesn't, the Z modeler doesn't work, it's probably because you have it on symmetry. And sometimes uh, some of the things don't work with symmet when symmetry is, is on. But there's my depression for the little uh, cut line for that particular part. And because the poly group was the same as the one in front, the one in front also did it. Look at the headlamp shape, the headlamp shape. So now I'm growing the visibility to, to get the rest of the, the edge of that surface, make it all into one poly group. The same as what I did with the uh, body panels and the glass. And doing the same for this part, making it uh, growing it and then making it all one poly group. And now for the headlamp, do the same with that. making sure that's all one poly group. So I think we've got all the poly groups designated. So now let me create this little fin on the back. I'm gonna just use some simple geometry, the uh, a cube, take out all the uh, edge loops, then scale it.
move it into position. Right, what I think I need to do is put some edge loops so I can get the um, various chamfers. So I'll put an edge loop there. Maybe use the move tool here. Take that down. So I, I think that went pretty fast. There was a there was a part of that creating the fin that I, I did not capture, unfortunately, but it was pretty much more of the same, moving those edge loops around, dividing them, and putting bevels around them. So sorry if I missed that. And so now I'm going to put, there are some slots in the original sketch. So I think I'll put three circles, and I see this a lot in some of the designer sketch sketches and then just suck that in. And now for the door handle. Just a little mask and then I'll just suck that in a little bit. Smooth it a little bit, use uh, the hard polish brush, maybe to try to get that, because there's, at this point it's going to be uh, a little difficult to make that perfect. But that's good enough. Now, just looking around, I'll bring the wheels that I've created. Again, there's another part that I've created without taping now we're inside of Keyshot, and it's time to throw in some colors. Background so I can see some reflections. Like I said, I am not really satisfied. I didn't say this, but I'm not really satisfied with the surface because I didn't follow the designer sketch uh, as well as I should have. But, you know, it doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure if I like that lamp there, that detail there. So I'm going to actually make that body color again and just let the line exist. Yeah, so pretty much that's it. You know, this is a really quick model. All together, it's taken me maybe about two and a half hours all the time that's that went into it. Two and a half hours, I've worked on it here and there in the last three days and uh, you can go pretty quick when you know where you're going. Let me put uh, a little decal on the fin there. I think there was something like that in his sketch. Quite easy to put decals in Keyshot and V-Red by the way. See how it looks and there you go. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this really quick tutorial on how to get from A to Z. Well, actually, it's not quite Z, but get from A to a fairly good model to be used for some quick renders and paint overs, etc. And uh, it's quite quick. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be doing many more like this. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next time.